Well, welcome back everybody. My name's Andrew and you're watching the Kelly's Country Life. So where do we begin today? As y'all can see, finally, 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 we're gonna raise some walls. Now, disclaimer, I'm gonna go ahead and let you know, this could be a boring episode. It's right before, actually it is Easter weekend. We have a bunch of get-togethers to go to, so let me start out by saying we're gonna have spotty videos in the next several days, as in some gaps. Typically, I try to upload every day, but it's a full-time job doing that. With all the get-togethers we have going, uh, that we're going to, the family that's in town, plus we always celebrate Easter weekend, something very important to us. I'm not gonna have time to make the content. I've got bigger priorities right now. Family and Easter weekend obviously comes first. And I'm sure y'all understand that. But if you're wondering where the videos are at the next few days, that's why we're gonna get them back to you. Secondly, I have got to leave in just a little bit to go to a get-together. So my goal today is to put one wall together. If we make it beyond one wall, great. But at least you and I can say now, we have started framing the walls. So really looking forward to that. Quick story, like I typically do at the beginning of every video before we get started. Oh, and, and I'm doing this. I hope y'all understand, I'm not complaining when I tell y'all about problems that I'm having along the way. I told uh, a lot of y'all to be very open and honest about the build, all the way from cost to problems that we're having to, you know, good things. So I'm wanting to share a lot with you because a lot of y'all reached out to me through comments and emails uh, because a lot of y'all are looking at building pole barn houses or either about to start the process, we'll be starting the next few months, or just generally curious about the overall process. And a lot of people have asked, don't keep out the details, give us the details. So I'm gonna try to do my best to do that along with making this entertaining and fun. So as y'all know, COVID has impacted building materials greatly. I have not raised walls in the last couple of weeks because I couldn't find sheathing to save my life. Just general OSB for the side. And trust me, I've looked at everything from OSB to plywood to that new green zip board. I was actually really curious in that. Couldn't practically find any of this stuff. And when I did find it, it was marked up 500% from what it was last year. Wasn't going to pay that. Or it had crazy limits on it. Like, hey, we're limiting customers to 10 sheets a person. That's not going to do me any good. I need way more than that. So as y'all seen in the last video, awesome news, found sheathing, we're good. Now I feel comfortable raising walls. So I said all that to say, I thought sheathing and wood was gonna be the only issue. Uh-uh. I drove 240 miles yesterday to five different towns. Um, some of them went to a couple different times just to find the most basic of materials. I was blown away. Now I'm talking common framing nails, tighten anchors to hold walls down, wall plate anchors or uh, uh, washers, simple stuff that you use every day, day in, day out building a home. I'm thinking I'm gonna get up early in the morning, run to town real quick, grab some of that stuff, come back, and I was expecting to have raised two or three walls yesterday. Oh no, I got home late yesterday afternoon before I finally found that stuff. And like I said, several hundred miles of driving just to locate it. Still don't have everything I need. So I'm letting y'all know these, these kind of things because if you are about to build a home, plan ahead, plan ahead, plan ahead. And when you see the stuff, go ahead and buy it. Uh, I seen nails just a couple months ago. Wish I had bought them. I didn't know it was in a nail shortage. I'm actually in Home Depot yesterday because I had to hit every big box store and mom and pop store I could find. A contractor comes running up to me. I'm in the nail aisle. He goes, do you see this certain type of nail? Very common nail. So no buddy, I've been here for a minute looking. I said, I'm actually on Amazon right now looking at ordering nails because I can't find what I need. He's a contractor now. He says, what are people gonna do? He says, I'm, I'm struggling uh, right now to find the basic of things to build homes. I, said, I don't know, man, this is this is just crazy. But let me, let me get off my sob store here, just filling y'all in that things are tough to get right now. We did find it, we're about to raise a wall and I need to kind of rush through this video since I've got to leave in a little bit. I'm ready to nail some lumber together. But the next episode, I'm gonna go over my plans with you, what the codes mean on the plan for certain size nails, for certain size hurricane straps, etc. And I'm gonna explain to you how I read those plans and knew what to go get, and then how I located this stuff. So this video won't be as detailed as the next one will. Just wanted to kind of give you that story to let y'all know that things are tough. I'm looking, I'll let you know where I found some of this stuff. And like I said, we'll go over the plans show you exactly what it was I was looking for and next episode hopefully we're raising more than one wall maybe we do today so enough yakking let's get started so something I want to show y'all while I'm pulling all the lumber out of that stack right there if y'all remember the day that I went and got all these tuba sixes I was complaining I was saying man 
these are the heaviest tuba sixes I have ever in my life held. Some of them, some of them are light. I was worried about them not being uh, dried properly, but I got to talking with a contractor friend hanging out on the river one day. He says, are you sure it's not dried or are you sure that you didn't just get some really good quality wood finally? I said, well, you know what? You're right. I remember some of these heavier pieces looking like heart of pine, just thick, full of the resin. This is this kind of reminds me of the old, just lighter, not hard of pine wood that you find in the houses built in the 50s and back, and you can't hardly drive a nail through it. And I just pulled one of these pieces out that feels 40 or 50 pounds, and I got to looking. That really does look like just thick, resinous, uh, hard of pine. But here's what got me excited. All right, so I hope y'all can see this. I think he was exactly right. Shame on me for complaining. I think I wound up with some good, good quality wood. They must be cutting some, not virgin timber right now, but really old growth timber just because the lumber industry's booming. So these pieces felt lightweight, like what I'm used to. Look at the growth rings on them, huge. You can tell this is young trees, just big old fat growth rings. I get to this piece that's heavy as can be. Look at the rings on that. I hope y'all can see it. I mean, there is three times as many rings, nice and tight. This reminds me of some of the lumber that I found in some of these older houses, you know, as a kid. This is what lumber is supposed to look like. This is really good quality, older growth stuff right here. Not this big old fat ring, lightweight stuff that you're used to nowadays. Look at this piece right here. You can tell it's got really good heart in it. Look at that, just ring after ring after ring, very tight. So I'm going to shut up. Looks like I had some really good quality wood in this. I don't think the drying is the issue. I uh, just got hard of pine, really good quality stuff. So it's gonna make, make uh, nice and sturdy walls. All right, I can tell you one thing that's gonna be critical on these pole barns is you wanna get a measurement at the bottom of the post and you definitely want to get a measurement up top. These posts can move, twist, and get out of shape. That's one reason you want to go ahead and raise walls quickly on a house like this, because I have built enough pole barns to see once these posts sit in the sun for a while, they'll twist, buckle, and do what they want. The quicker you get a wall up in between them, the less headache and hassle you'll have if you can catch them before they start shifting. So I'm gonna grab a quick measurement at the bottom, and then all the way up top, and fingers crossed, they're not too far off. Now the plans call for the bottom base plate to be pressure treat and should any water ever flood and enter the house it's good to have a pressure treat baseboard especially in a design like this however we are so far above grade I doubt it would ever be a problem but we've got to follow the plan Alright, so it's never been my intention to be a teaching channel or kind of a DIY type of channel, but a lot of y'all have shown interest in the details and y'all have asked over and over and over to include you on that. So, while I am not a professional house builder, this is the first house I've ever built. Did a little bit of remodeling. I do a lot of thinking and watching. I'm going to show you how I'm going to build it. That does not mean it's the right way or it's too code for your area or maybe even for me. So if you catch me doing something that needs some critiquing, by all means drop a comment. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna lay out this top and bottom plate and we're gonna get this first wall up. But here lies one of the issues of a pole barn house. So the plans call for 16 inch on center studs. That's pretty common. Honestly, I thought we was gonna get away with 24 inch on center being these are non-load bearing walls, but it is what it is. We can't just go along laying out 16 inches and raise a wall up all the way down the house like you do a traditional stick frame house because we have poles everywhere we have to fit in between. Now, as you just seen, I just measured the top and bottom plate. They are slightly off a little, so I've got to kind of make up the difference here. But the problem it lies, if I were to just go start laying out 16 inch on center studs right here on this top and bottom plate, I'm not accounting for the posts that are down there. Then that's really gonna mess up my sheathing. So there is a little bit of waste and extra lumber in building walls this way because I need the butts of my sheathing to match up. There's two ways to go about it. Let me show you how we are gonna address one of those ways. So this pole barn is made up of six by six posts. 
and nothing <laughs> nothing is correct whenever you call the six by six you would think hey six inches right nope it is actually this one is almost five and three quarters but typically they are five and a half inches by five and a half inches let's check this other one that's the other problem with dimensional lumber a lot of times it is not cut the same look that one is actually five and a half so there is a quarter inch difference between these two and that's going to get in the way so this one's almost five and a quarter or five and three quarters that way five and a half that way so nothing is exactly as you would hope for it to be so let me let me explain my thinking to you and why i'm going to do something a certain way and it's going to waste lumber in the process actually no matter what we do it's going to waste lumber so we are about to raise a wall up in between these posts and I, then I have to come back later and put sheathing on the outside. Now is the time to think that through. So if I were to just raise this wall up and start right here on my first stud, that's gonna be inside this post and do 16 on center. That's great. That, that's just what it calls for, 16 inch on center. However, you're not accounting for this post here when you do that. I want my sheathing to start on the outside edge of this post so I can nail into it and carry it on. So if 16 inch on center starts here, and not from the edge of this, once I get my sheathing here, it's in an open void in the wall. So you have to put a stud in right there, an extra stud. Lumber's expensive right now, but again, no matter which option we do, we're gonna be wasting lumber right here. So the other option is to move all the studs over in the wall to match as if this was part of the wall, and ultimately it's gonna be. So if I do 16 inch on center from this edge, I'll wind up with a stud right here. So I need to account for that five and three quarters inches start right here and then go 16 inch on center from that. So whenever my four foot wide sheet a sheathing stops right here or eight foot, depending on which direction I run it, it's meeting a stud and I can lay my sheathing right here and nail into that same stud and carry on. Another important point, the reason I want to start my sheathing on the outside edge of this instead of starting it on the wall here and then ripping a piece to put here that sheathing actually will act kind of like a hurricane strap. Once I nail it all into this post and then nail it into every two by four or two by six, excuse me, in the wall, it essentially ties the wall to this post, giving me extra strength. Instead of me starting a piece of sheathing right here and then ripping a piece to put right here, which you would never be able to tell once it's wrapped and siding on, but the strength is no longer there. That's important. I'm trying to engineer and tie the interior wall since they're on a heavy duty footer to these posts and I'm going to do it in several ways that I'm going to show you. So if should these posts ever rot, that's always a big concern with a pole barn, but should we have an issue, termites really get into them and they don't hold up, water builds up right here and rots this post out. I want these interior walls to be tied to these posts in such a way that they're still giving it some structural support. So I had the engineer do a special way, I'll show you on the plans a little bit, where we're going to tie the interior walls uh, with lag bolts into these posts but also I want to make sure my sheathing is really tying and locking everything together so what that means is we're gonna have to put up a couple of extra two by sixes in every single wall all the way down I've added it up that's about three hundred dollars in extra lumber for these side walls on both sides the ends uh, I haven't calculated out yet we may be able to do some space in there where it doesn't add up but we're at least gonna be three hundred dollars now the other option is to keep my interior walls at 16 on center, don't even count the post, and then I'll have to rip a $30 sheet of OSB every time, about every 30 something inches, and then run on for a little bit and then rip it again. So the cost not adding up so great there, and I don't know that I'll be able to use all those rips uh, later. I guess I could use them for some header spacers and things like that. But in my mind, it makes more sense to count this post in Make sure the sheathing's tied into the post and really locking everything together. It's kind of acting as a strap that way. Now, if that didn't make sense, it will make sense once we get the walls up and I can show you a little more. So typically what you do, again, you just throw your tape measure down and start marking every 16 inch on center. But now I've got to count for that post width in this since that post is technically gonna be a part of my wall now and sheathing it. And again, I'll talk to some of y'all like maybe this is your first time with tools. Y'all ask for the details. If you're not familiar with the tape measure, every 16 inches has a red mark because that's kind of industry standard. There it is, to where a wall stud should go. Yes, some walls are 24 inch on center and can have different spacings, but 16 is the most common. So, 
So what I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna space my tape off right there. We know that post was right at five and three quarter inches. I'm gonna come here to that 16 inch mark. Now I know from the edge of this post to here, I'm gonna start 16 inch on center because I'm starting my sheathing at the edge of that post. It'll go 16, 32. Once we get to 48 inches, which is the edge of my sheathing, it's gonna meet up on a wall stud. So what this means is again, I'm gonna wind up with extra studs in this wall, making it even stronger, but they're still gonna have that 16 inch spacing. I'm just shifting everything to the right. But now that I have made my marks, every 16 inches on the bottom plate, plus that five and three quarter inch for the post, since it's technically part of the wall, I have butted my top plate to my bottom plate, and this is a good time to go ahead and transfer the lines all the way across. It's where 12 inch framing square really comes in handy. Now here's where I do things a little differently, and you're gonna notice everybody does things differently. I, I'm not a carpenter by trade, so I don't do things to industry standard. Most people will put a mark to where the side of the uh, two by six or two by four is supposed to go. So technically it'd be over here, and then you use the line to kind of line the side up. Then they'll make them a mark there. Because I do 16 on center, in my mind center means the line should be center, and I have no problem seeing the line up top, putting my two by six on there and nailing through. So if y'all see my marks are a little different than what you're used to, it's just my way of thinking the way I do that there. So like I said, technically we have five and three quarter inch post right here. So from the edge of that post where I'll put my sheathing to here, 16 inches, you know, 32, here's 48. The reason I wrote me an S right here is because I know this is the stud that my sheathing is gonna butt up on. So one four foot piece of sheathing will stop right here. Another one will start. 16, 32, 48 pieces of uh, sheathing will stop right here again. The reason this is critical is because there is going to be a five and three quarter or five and a half inch six by six right here. When I start my next piece of sheathing from here on, when I start my next wall, I want to measure from this wall that's already up all the way over to where 48 inches is and make sure I have a stud so I can keep carrying on my four by eight pieces of sheathing. I would much rather put, uh, do this odd space and then put an extra two by six every so often than I would to have to rip sheet after sheet after sheet of sheathing down. That's much longer cuts, hard to keep them straight, aggravating, much quicker to throw a two by six up here, cut it, and believe it or not, it's actually a little cheaper right now. For example, this wall winds up with really maybe one extra two by six, the next wall may wind up with two. So that $300 figure I threw at you may actually be a bit high. It'll probably be a couple hundred or so extra dollars in two by sixes. And ultimately I wind up with a stronger wall all the way around. More two by sixes in the wall, sheathing, locking the post to the wall, just the way I want it. I do not mind overbuilt. Now, if you have a window or a door, this is a perfect time to go ahead and mark out all that too. Your jack studs, your king studs, etc. This wall happens to have nothing in it. But my plans also call for anchoring these down with Titan bolts, and it gives a specification. It wants them at every corner, so I'll go ahead and put one in near the corner, and it also calls for them to be every 36 inches on center. Now's the time to mark that out. Go ahead and drill your holes. Last thing you want is your bottom plate on the concrete floor, and then, dang it, I've gotta drill holes. As soon as your bit goes through this wood and touches concrete, it's ruined, it's done. Now's the time to put those in. All right, so these are what I'm gonna be using to hold this bottom plate down to the concrete. These are called Titan HD anchor bolts. Very highly rated, supposed to be extremely strong. They undercut the concrete and really hold in great. So I wanna make sure they fit through. No problem. Again, we'll be using a plate washer and holding those down to the concrete just like this. This wall is not going anywhere. All right, now my plans call for double top plates on every wall in the house. I don't understand it on some of them. That's okay. It'll be a little stronger when it's all said and done. I'll sleep better at night. But these back walls that we're about to build, they're actually going to be eight foot walls because they have to support an attic. Top plate definitely makes sense there. So, now I have to account, before I start cutting all my studs to go in between, I've got to get eight foot total because that's what I want the ceiling height to be in on the inside. 
So every piece of lumber, again, if you're new to this, it's called a two by six. It's not two inches thick. It's not six inches wide. They are an inch and a half thick. So three of them, four and a half inches. I have to take that out of account for the length of my studs to get an eight foot overall height. That's what we're about to do next. Let's go get these bottom plates and top plates set up, and then we'll start cutting all the studs that go in between. Now it's critical that I bring these uh, plates off the saw horse the same way I lined them up. So they're not true 16 inch on center both direction. I started from that post. I wanna make sure the lines match up top to bottom. All right, so again, we want our walls to be exactly eight foot to the ceiling where the ceiling rafters come down. And we designed it that way on purpose to help with cost because now I can go buy eight foot materials, eight foot sheetrock, whatever uh, I need. It cuts down on time. I don't have to do no ripping, no extra seaming, taping, mudding, and eight foot sheetrock is affordable. So we can go slap up eight foot walls. This is in the back part of the house only. Once we get to the living room, we're doing 12 foot walls and vaulted ceilings. So we have to do something a little different. Instead of buying eight foot two by sixes, I went ahead and bought everything as 12 footers, a whole lot easier because just because we're putting a eight foot wall up back here, we still have rafters to put over and then we have to build another short stubby wall up top to finish closing in the side because it's still 12 foot eave height back here. So all the leftover lumber that I have cutting these 12 footers down to eight foot will get used. We're gonna turn right around and build another short wall up top in the attic. So since I have two top plates and one bottom plate all at an inch and a half thick, I have to take four and a half inches off. 96 inches is total what I'm looking for, minus four and a half inches. So that'll leave us 91 and a half inches that I need to cut all my studs to. All right, so I've got all my wall studs cut, and what we're gonna be doing next is nailing them all together. This is one of the hardest things there was to find yesterday, just common nails. However, I went up settling for something, galvanized nails, and I'll tell you why I went with galvanized. Two reasons, one, I have pressure treat bottom plate that's gonna require galvanized. Yeah, I could buy a small box, nail those in, and then just go to your old common nail for the top. But I watched a video off a of Project Farm he has a YouTube channel, a quite large one. I love watching his stuff. He's extremely detailed, has a lot of data, but uh, I'll include that video down in the description. I want y'all to watch it if you're into that kind of stuff. He did a test last year, year before, uh, galvanized nails versus ring shank, all basically all nails comparing. And you would be shocked at how well the uh, galvanized nails held. Now, yes, there's two kinds of strength, shear strength and tensile strength, pull out strength. Um, but they did an amazing job. They, they were a considerable amount more holding power just with a galvanized coating than a regular smooth shank nail. I didn't see anywhere in any building code that stated I couldn't use galvanized. You do have certain lengths and all that you need to do. Typically, you'll see most people use three and a quarter inch in a, a nail gun and three and a half inch when you're nailing in by hand. There's a lot of debate there. Look up your own rules and regulations. I'm not getting into that debate, but I will say, that for an extra $40, it looks like I'm gonna have just an in interior nails, it was worth the upgrade to me to do strictly galvanized nails. That's what I'm gonna nail everything with. Uh, like I said, watch that video. It was very interesting. I couldn't believe how much better a galvanized held, or nail held than just a regular smooth shank common nail. It was, uh, it was crazy. So anytime you're nailing two by four studs, it's always two nails per stud. A two by six requires three. There are some screws that are designed for uh, framing out there and can handle the load, but they're a special type. I think they're called R4 or something, and extremely expensive. I thought about going with some of those, but this thing's already gonna be so overbuilt as it is. I'm just gonna go with a common type nail and do three per board that's required. Alright, moment of truth. This is where I better ate my Wheaties. 
because while I'm happy I got this good solid wood, it's gonna be heavy raising these walls. I may have to build them on the ground and wait for help every day. Let's see. Like a glove? Yeah. Wow, that's a really good fit. I can tell you, I won't be lifting the 12 foot walls by myself. Eight footers I can barely handle. Once I get wind, the headers and other things in them, it's gonna be close. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this anchored to the wall to show you how we're gonna do that in the floor. I actually ran out of time. We've got to get over to a get together with family. So this is gonna be the only wall I can get to today. But at least I'm showing you how we're gonna do it, the progress, and the next episode, we're really gonna get into headers and framing and the way we're gonna do studs and strapping. But as of right now, I'm gonna drill out these holes for these tighten anchor bolts and show you how I take care of the hole that's critical in order to get a good bite. All right, it's critical. Anytime you drill a hole down in the concrete, you blow it out because that dust, a lot of it will stay down in there and you'll wind up putting your bolt in and it'll never pull down and do its job and cinch and pull this bottom plate down. So I'm gonna blow this out. Luckily, the wind's blowing that way. Concrete dust is something you definitely don't wanna breathe. So I'm gonna get back this side and let it blow out of the way. So my anchor will go down and bite into that concrete now. What's critical, I showed this earlier, this is called a plate washer. And they make them in all different sizes, two inches, three inches, and different thicknesses too. But this will spread out the load over this board instead of just having that tiny lip of the bolt right there. Now again, this, this uh, wall really isn't attached to the roof. I'm not so concerned about actually lifting this up and it trying to pull out of the ground if the roof were attached to it but because we are attaching this to the post and there is a slight potential they could pull out highly unlikely with all the concrete they're in we do want to go ahead and secure this wall and really tie everything together this is cheap insurance as far as i'm concerned a few hundred extra dollars throughout the entire building to do really good anchoring is well worth it good peace of mind All right, this little impact does a good job of holding that down, but I'm gonna come back with my half inch impact later and make sure these are really bit into the concrete good. But I even seen that pull the bottom plate down. So believe it or not, this next request was mine. When I first started talking to the engineer about designing this, I told him I had concerns about if these posts were to ever potentially rot off. And by the way, I bought really good quality posts. These are actually rated for saltwater environment. A lot of people have asked me, aren't you concerned about post rot? Yes, absolutely I am. It's always a concern with pole barbs. We'll talk more in depth about that later. I still think the most critical thing you can do is to get water away from the structure. I've got a lot of things we'll do down the road for that. But these are not saltwater submersed rated, which is the best you can get treated post there is. I just couldn't get them at the time due to COVID and uh, a lot of production demands to mills. They weren't making them, at least a few mills that I called. But this is the second highest rated post. It's rated for saltwater splash or contact. Um, it's got a really high kind of antifungal mold treatment, you know, anti-rock treatment, I guess I should call it in there, as well as a higher 
arsenic treatment for bugs. No, that does not concern me being in the wall, and I do not want termites eating my structure down. But when I talked to the engineer, I said, hey, there's still always the potential of these posts rotting off or failing. So I would like to lag the uh, the wall, these posts, or these two by sixes into this. Is that something we can do? He said, absolutely. So it's in the engineer plans that I have to put three eight inch lag bolts through this side uh, two by six right here into this post. I'll also do it from this side. And I actually went a little above and beyond what's called for in the plans. I went with a, a longer, heftier lag. So it's, it calls for every 24 inches on center. I'm gonna do one up top, one up bottom, find 24 inches uh, on center in between. So should something ever happen to this post, you have interior walls now that are sitting on a footer that will still give this post some support. And a little tip for you, when it comes to hardware like this, nobody beats tractor supplies prices, at least in my area. They sell it by the pound. So whereas you may go into a hardware store and this bolt could be, I've I seen them anywhere from 70 something cent to a dollar something. You go into tractor supply and it's 3.59 a pound for a pile of bolts. I mean, it is way, way cheaper. Go get your hardware from tractor supply. That's about all I really like from there. Okay, everybody, first wall is officially done. Well, kind of. We have our first wall raised and anchored to code to plans. So again, we have these big half inch Titan HD anchors down there holding it down. Those things, like I said, they're extremely highly rated. They hold a tremendous amount of force. They have good shear strength and uh, tensile strength as well. Very strong. Not only is this tube of six nailed all into the wall, but we have lag bolts holding it in as well. So this will really help support these timbers should anything ever happen. Plus it helps really lock the wall into the timbers too to take any kind of sway out of the house. So this is an eight foot wall. And again, I know some of y'all probably looking at that going, what on earth? So it's eight foot to the top of a double top plate. That's what plans call for. So what will happen once I get all these walls raised, I'm going to come back in here with two by eight rafters, 24 inch on center that go up top. That's why we have a double top plate because it will be somewhat of a load bearing wall, at least as far as the attic is concerned. So once I put those two by eights up there, there'll be a small opening still left up top to where I'll build just a short stub wall that'll go up to the ceiling. That's how we'll finish everything in so we can put sheathing on the outside all the way up to the roof. So what you're looking at essentially now, from the top of the top plates, plus a two by eight, there'll be a floor there, that is the attic. So it'll be a, a large attic with just enough room to maybe walk standing up down the center. You'll have to duck to go underneath these cross braces, but it'll give us a lot of storage up there for all those little odds and ends and boxes that you don't want. Plus, I like having the room up there. To, if I ever need to run wiring or add on or do anything, I can, go right in the attic over to the closet. I can pull plumbing through if I need to, do some PEX lines. I can run uh, more wiring down the road should we do any kind of add-ons like we've thought. So I'm going to really enjoy having an attic that I can somewhat walk around in because the last house had one that you could belly crawl in <laughs> and it was a nightmare. So it's gonna be nice to have the storage walk around room and uh, like I said, be able to pull wiring and plumbing and whatever else I need. All right, so we officially have our first wall up. Yay, <laughs> we're making progress and Tiffany won't kill me when she comes home because at least she'll see some sort of progress. Although I'm gonna get the, that's all you did today? Yeah, I know. At least now we have all the tools set up, everything's in the bucket. People don't think about how long that takes. That's probably spent an hour, hour and a half this morning running back and forth, getting every single tool that I need. So now when it comes time to do the next wall, I've still got all the measurements in my head. I've got everything just kind of laid out and visualized now. It'll be so much quicker. I've got all my tools staged, 
ready to go. All I gotta do is just bring the tractor out here every single day with everything in the bucket. So it'll make it quick and easy. The next video, we'll start raising walls going down. The next wall that we're gonna raise is gonna have our first header built in it. It'll be the bedroom window. So that'll be kind of a fun one. I'll get to show you how we'll build the headers, how we'll laminate them together, how we'll do strapping to code. Also in that next episode, I'm gonna spend a little more time laying out the plans, showing you what certain things mean, uh, what I had to go pick up. We'll, we'll get a little more detail. I just knew I didn't have time today because just as soon as I turn this camera off, I've got to go pack up everything immediately, get ready, and we're hitting the road. Of course, by the time y'all watch this, it's already a day or two later. But again, we're going to spend that time with family and enjoy this Easter weekend. Hopefully y'all enjoyed it. We are raising walls. It's finally happening. Finally, finally, finally. Oh, one other important thing. First of next week, the uh, contractors then called back. They're coming Monday to start on the roof. So we're going to have a lot going on next, uh, next week. Continue to raise roofs. Uh, continue to raise roofs. Continue to raise walls. Put roofing on. It's going to really start coming together and looking like something. So I'm really excited about that. Again, don't forget, videos will be spotted the next few days. I may be able to post. I may not. We're going to spend that time with the family. Thank you all so much for watching. We truly do appreciate the support. We'll catch you on the next video.